color balancing for beginners. That's what we're talking about in this video. But to understand what color balancing is and how to work with it, first we need a little bit of information. So a camera essentially captures light and the way it does it is to capture tiny, tiny pixels or squares of red, green and blue, also known as RGB. So that's how our image comes together. That's what you're seeing right now. I'm basically just a large amount of very tiny pixels of red, green and blue, all melted together to combine into these colors that you're seeing and the reproduction of light in that way. And with that out of the way, we can start to talk about how to balance your colors in your footage to make sure that it looks correct. And the way that we do that is by moving around the different channels of colors to make sure that everything is balanced and how it's supposed to be. Because sometimes our cameras mess it up and get it wrong, and that's why we need to fix it. So let's head into DaVinci Resolve and have a look at how we can do that. All right, so inside DaVinci Resolve, I've just imported this clip. This clip, I know particularly my camera messed up the white balance completely. I don't know why. I think it was because we shot in the morning and I had an indie filter on and everything just messed up. So let's head into the color page. We've worked with this clip before, but today we're just focusing on the color balance. So let's get to the color balancing first. I'm gonna skip a little bit fast ahead in this. I'm gonna create four notes. Those are gonna be our color correction. So this is gonna be our CST to convert. This will be our contrast. This will be our exposure. And this one will be our color balance. I'm just gonna call it balance. So. For the CST, I'm just gonna input my parameters. So in this case, it's gonna be Canon Cinema Gamma, Canon Log 3, Rec 709, and Gamma 2.4. To get it into Rec 709, I can clean up the note graph a little bit here, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of contrast to the shot, looking at the waveform, making sure that we're stretching out some of that information to get some nicer look. And this won't be enough for this clip, and it's already quite a harsh line here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head into the exposure, and I'm using the offset to drag it up. Then I'm also gonna increase the gain and reduce the lift quite a bit, just to get the entire image sitting in a much better place. And we're gonna move forward a little bit so we can see our model here a little bit better. And already it looks okay. I think we're gonna crank up the gamma a little bit more, see if we can get the skin tones to lie somewhere closer to 70 without it being too much. So already this is pushing it quite far, so we're gonna drop it down a little bit again and I think somewhere like this is a good start but if we're looking at the image now we can already see that it looks off it looks weird and if you don't notice it immediately don't worry it took me a while to figure out first of all what was wrong with this image but also just to learn color balancing in general so this is why we're doing it now the best tool, your best friend in color balancing will be the vector scope. So by pulling this up, just a quick explanation is that we have magenta, blue, cyan, green, yellow, and red. Those are the representations that we have around the wheel here. And as you remember, maybe from the beginning, we had red, green, and blue as our primaries and opposite of those are the opposite colors. So opposite of green is magenta, opposite of red is cyan, and opposite of blue is yellow. So we can kind of use this to work around. Now there are a few different methods. Let's select the balance node here. There are a few different me methods that we can work with in terms of getting the balance right. So we have a few different things that we can look at if we make this small and having the qualifier on. Moving around you can see this little circle and if you have display qualifier focus on and the, the qualifier here you can see where you're moving around. So moving around here where we want our skin tones to be is on this line here and you can see when I'm hovering around here it's not really lying there it's lying a lot more to the magenta side so that's the first take that we can see that okay something is off if we are moving around the white here we can also see that lies often towards the blue teal side that's normal but it also lies far up towards the magenta side so that's a giveaway that everything is off and why the footage might look weird in general. So we have a different few tools that we can work with. We have temperature and tint, which are the most common. If you come from photography, you'll know these as well. And those are fine. You can see if we move the temperature up to make it warmer, you can see it moves in between the red and the yellow here up here. The more we increase the temperature and then it just blows out the colors at the end. And the same thing here, if you move it back, it's not going towards the blue, it's not going towards the cyan, it's going kind of in the middle. It's not moving in a straight line either. It's moving kind of like in a little bit of a twisted road 
maybe it is kind of straight, but it is twisting a little bit depending on the footage. And the tint and the magenta is kind of moving them between the green and the magenta side as well. You can see that. And to kind of try and balance out the magenta, you could just try and move it down and see where our colors lie. And already now we're a little bit closer, but everything still looks a little bit off. So while these tools are great, those I will say is more on the beginner side because those give you somewhat control over what you're doing. And if you want to stick to them, that's perfectly fine. You can do sort of the same as we're going to do, but those give you two handles that you can move around between the kind of mid of the cyan and blue and the mid between the red and the yellow. So somewhere between here, you can move things and here. So you can get uh, an X that you can move between here and here and here and here. So these are kind of the lines that we can work with. But if we instead take our offset again, I'm gonna move the vector scope up here so you can see at the same time. Now we don't have anything selected. Now we can move to the offset instead. And now, as we talked about in the beginning, we had red, green, and blue. Those are all the small pixels that we have captured in here. As we already know, we had too much magenta. So the opposite of magenta is green, and we have the green control here that we can work with. So this kind of works the same as the tint. If we get green here, we'd add green into our scene and we can add magenta as well. You can see it doesn't do the exact same because it looks more green and more magenta than it did before. And the same thing we can do with the red and the cyan and also the blue and the yellow. But as you can see here, it moves a lot more on these axes straight on the colors rather than somewhere in between here and then a little bit more on the green and magenta side of the tint. So what we can do to try and balance this out, if we zoom in a little bit here, we want to get closer to the skin tones lying exactly on this line. So by adding a little bit more green, we're definitely getting closer to something that looks good. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it looks perfect because it's still maybe a little bit too much to the blue side as well, the blue cyan side. So what we can do is we can try and add a little bit more red as well and maybe remove a little bit of blue. And what you can see here is if I add red, it moves up. And if I remove blue, it moves left. So what I really do with the offset here and my color balancing is that I can move this blob of color in any direction that I want. I'm not restricted to moving on these two axes. I actually have three axes that I can work on at the same time. As you can see, if we turn this off and then on again, now we have something that looks a lot better. And maybe it's a little bit too yellow now, so we can add a little bit of blue back, maybe remove a little bit of the red again, and then kind of try and dial it in to where it looks nice. Now the skin tones are starting to lie in the correct spot here. So we're getting close to something that will look good. Those, when we're hovering around, we can see the light pretty much in the center here. And while I might want it to be a little bit more up towards the red side to get a little bit more saturation in those areas, this is starting to look really, really good. So moving these things around to try and balance things out and get it to lie around the skin tone line. Now this big circle can be a little bit difficult to interpret. The most important part is that this area of information lies in the correct place. And I'm even thinking that we need to move a little bit more to the left here because it tends to be this side that is the blob. And you can see now we're lying pretty much on the line. If we turn this off, you can see now everything looks very magenta compared to before. And if you turn it on, now everything looks a bit more green and I'm not sure if we nailed it completely. So we can dial back the green a little bit and then we can try and move around. Now this is our color correction. So our aim is to get as close to how it looked in real life as possible. And then we can start doing our grading where we're really filling around with the colors. So it doesn't have to get to a point where it looks amazing right here. That's where our color grading comes in. But this is really how you can color balance. So if you see balance or color balancing, that's what it means. You could also take it a step further and head into the HDR wheels where you can move this around to try and balance things out. And at the same time, you have the temperature and tint sliders in here. I tend to feel that the offset is easier to use and easier to understand. So that's what I'm sticking to most of the time. You can also move this dot around. So that gives you full control over that little blob of color. So we could try to move that as close as possible to where we want it and then have more of a full field control over what we're doing. I prefer to move these three channels around because I feel like I can more easily move in and dial in the small details rather than moving this. And it's a quite small knob, so you don't really have full control or way of moving things. But that is the essentials of how we can go about it. So if we're moving things a little bit more around here, I think we are at a pretty good point. 
at least at less magenta now, it might be a little bit too green, but that's also just the fault of the shot in general. So working around with this will definitely help you get a nicer look and just dialing in the last parts here, removing a little bit more green. I think this is pretty much where I would end up and then I'll definitely add more contrast and work more with it in the color grading. But for the color correction, I think this is a pretty good end zone of where we want to be. So to recap, color balancing is all about moving around those red, green and blue pixels to get it to look where it's supposed to be. And now if you shot it correctly with the correct white balance in the beginning, you don't necessarily have to do this, but this is such a powerful tool if your white balance is off and if your image looks off for some reason, this is where you want to go to and you want to do it in your color correction in the beginning so that when you get to your color grading, you already have a good looking image to start from. Instead of working with this purple image or magenta image and trying to get something that looks nice out of that because that can be a lot more difficult to treat those colors in rather than starting with something that is a lot more balanced overall and then moving straight into the color grading. So I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And as always, I'm happy to help. I love seeing your comments and I appreciate you watching. So until next time, take care.